Hey cat friends, I love organization, especially when it comes to my tools. But right now my drawers are absolute disasters. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to use SolidWorks and design tables to design a modular container system for your drawers. Let's go. All right guys, let's get into the design. So originally seen these modular containers over on Alex's channel. He builds a lot of cool stuff, so go check him out. But unfortunately, his designs did not fit my IKEA drawer, so I had to design my own. Plus, it's just more fun designing it yourself. So these containers work exactly like Lego. So each of the containers is a different size, but it fits into a common grid. So Lego does this using unit sizes. So when you talk about bricks, you say a one by one brick or a two by four brick. These containers work exactly the same. If you look at the screen here, we have a one by one container. In our configurations, we can switch this to a one by two container. So each of these being a unit. We can switch this to a two by two container. And so on and so forth. The main thing here is I didn't go in and create each of these manually, each of these configurations. That's where design tables come in. So design tables are essentially built in Excel tables that let you edit the dimensions of your model to create a bunch of configures like this. So to start off our design, we're gonna start with a sketch on the top plane. And we're gonna start with a rectangle. Now normally I use a center point rectangle about the origin, but in this case we want our dimensions to extend out one direction, not about an axis. And you'll see why when we go to start cutting out the um, area for the grid underneath. So our units are going to be two by two. This isn't the exact dimensions for the Alex drawers. The STLs linked down below will have the actual dimensions for the Alex drawers. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use two by two because it works out to be a little nice rounder numbers. So we're going to extrude this out two and a half inches and we have a block. Not really useful because we can't store anything in it, but we'll get to that after. So the next thing we're gonna do is start cutting out for our grid pattern. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to replicate the grid pattern and then just make cut extrudes from it. So we're gonna start here with a sketch on the front plane. Let's grab that front plane. And the grid is just going to be 3 8 rectangles. Not rectangles, 3 8 triangles. That sounds right. So we're going to line this up here. Make this 3 8. Make these 45s and equal length. What I don't want to do is start making relations onto um, the geometry that I already have just in case they start breaking. There you go. So now I need to keep this pattern going. So we're just gonna use a linear sketch pattern. We're gonna use a distance of two because that's our unit size. And we're gonna make it about 10 wide. I can't see myself making more than a 10 by 10 grid. And we wanna duplicate those. So the last thing we have to do is make sure that these are all fully defined. So we'll grab those, mention it, and extrude cut this. So extrude cut. So now we want to make sure we're going through all because we got to be thinking ahead that when we expand this out, we don't want it ending at a certain distance. We don't want blind. We could go up to surface, but we're just going to go through all. So that'll make sure no matter how long we make it, it goes all the way through. So I'm going to do the same now for all the width cuts, uh, but we'll skip through that because it's the exact same process. So there we go, we have our cuts made for the bottom grid now. So you can see if we go back in here and we start editing these, so let's make this a two by two, which would be four, or two units by two units, units would be four by four, and click okay. When it rebuilds, you can see that we have the proper grid pattern that we need, so that's good. We're just gonna go reset this back. So the next thing we need to do is trim some of the edge off. 
So if these were actually two by two and then our uh, drawer was made at say four by four, we can't fit them all in there. It'd be too tight of a fit. So we need to shave a little bit off the outsides just for clearance between each of each of the drawers. So we're just gonna click on the top here and we're gonna use a linear offset. So this makes sure that no matter what the geometric pattern, so no matter whether it's a two by four, whatever that shape is, it's always going to offset from that outside in. And we're just gonna make this um, five thou. I think that should be enough. It doesn't need much, but there's just gonna be some imperfections in the geometry, plus it'll add up to enough that they're not really tight to get into there. So now we're just gonna do an extrude cut. And once again, we can just blast this through all. That way, if we change the height of the container, it doesn't matter. There you go. So the next thing we need to do is make this hollow because right now it's pretty useless as a container. To do that, we're gonna use something called the shell feature. So with the shell feature, you need to choose the side that you want open as well as the thickness you want on the walls. So we want the top open and then all of our walls we want to be a 16th. So that means all the bottom is gonna be a 16th, all the sides are gonna be a 16th. So clicking okay, it is hollowed out. So we got 16th walls and then you can see going down to the bottom it's a 16th out so we're good we're on our way now we're gonna make that little uh, hand or that finger grabber slash the label so to do this we're gonna start a sketch on this face and we're gonna start making some geometry so we're gonna make this out and then have it come down oh actually we'll make a little bit of a lip I think just so that we can round that nicer and then this have this come down to here. Nope. We'll make this a 16th just to see. Nope, that looks too big. We'll try, actually no, we'll leave it as a 16th and then we'll just make this lower. We need to think of what, it's gonna print upwards so we need to think of what overhang my printer can do. I don't know what that did. We want 45. We want 45 degrees. And we don't really want it this big. <laughs> and then thinking about what we want for this has to be vertical. Thinking about what we want for a label, I wanna use half inch label tape. So this should be half an inch plus the 16th. So that way I have a little bit of a lip all the way around. Now I mentioned that I want these to go all the way back. So, or all the way across the width. So to do that, we're gonna use a extrude boss up to surface. That way, no matter how the width changes, it's always gonna be from one side all the way to the other side. Just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and make that nice little indent I had for the label to sit in. So there we go. We might actually add some fillets on the outside to give it a little bit of a nicer look. And we'll make that a 16. Before we launch the design table, we need to make note of what the dimension names are that we want to change. So if we click on this and go to edit sketch and we click on one of the dimensions, you can see that there's actually a name for this dimension. So the name of this dimension is D2 at sketch 14. So dimension two in sketch number 14. If we click on this one here, it's D1 at sketch 14. So these are the names that we're gonna be putting into our design table. So to launch the design table tool, I don't know where it's located, so I always just search it and choose design table. So we're gonna auto create this one because it's gonna give us all the prompts that we need. So clicking yes, it's now prompting us to ask for what dimensions that we want to control with the design table. So if you remember correctly, it's D1 at sketch 14 and D2 at sketch 14. These are actually all listed in how they were created, so the same as the uh, design tree. So these are the first two sketches, 
and then this is the dimension of that first boss extrude. So I'm just going to choose these first two sketches. I don't really care about changing the height. If I did, I would also include the boss extrude. So clicking OK. We can see that our table is now populated with two columns, D1, D2, and then our configuration names are going to be the rows. So our dimensions were two by two, that's what our original one was set. So now we can start populating the other sizes that we want. So now if I click out of the table, it's going to auto generate all these configurations. So if I click out, it's thinking, auto generating. So there you go. Design table has generated the following configurations, all of the ones that we listed. So now when we go into here, we can see that indeed we have all of the configurations. So a one by one is what we have right here. We can go to a one by two and that is generated outwards with Thankfully, no errors because we thought of everything beforehand. And then we can go to say, I don't know, let's try a two by two. Let's see if this one generated correctly. And there we go, we have a two by two. So it's that easy to set up design tables and it makes going through those so much easier. So the only problem here is if we wanted to do um, some fillets on the inside, Sometimes the auto generation is going to create some geometry that's new. So if we look at the difference between um, this two by two, we can see we have a ridge in here or we have two ridges and we switch to this one. That ridge that would be in this location is no longer there. So sometimes if you want to fill it everything, you're still going to have to go back in and change some of those. For these containers, it's perfectly fine. I don't really care about filleting the insides because they're not going to get touched anyways. Okay guys, the last thing I want to show you is the grid pattern for the bottom of the drawers. This is what keeps all the containers from shifting about and gives them that Lego feel. So I also want to make this configurable because I'm not really sure what's going to be needed to fill up the drawers in there and what's going to fit best on my printer. So we're going to make this out of design tables again. So we're going to start with a sketch on the top plane. And we'll start with a corner rectangle, start in the origin. Now the trouble is this wants to snap to everything, but if you hold the control key, it'll stop it from wanting to auto snap so that we can actually put in some dimensions. That was a fun trick on our 60 second solid tips. If you haven't seen those, go check them out because you can learn cool tricks like that. So we're gonna make this four inches. And we'll make this four inches. And snap it into the corner. And now we want to extrude cut. But this is gonna be a trick. We don't really want, we don't want to extrude cut the stuff in the middle. We want everything else extruded to cut. So another fun 60 second solid tip that was on the 60 second solid tip video is that you can actually cut everything else. So if you choose the flip side to cut, it's gonna cut everything outside of that square instead of inside. So we're just gonna go bind and then through all and flip direction. So if we click okay, you can see that everything else was cut away. So this is what we're gonna use to configure what size of this grid that we want. So now if we launch our design table, so we're once again gonna auto create and then we want the dimensions from the last thing that we created, which was D1 and D2. We have our other sizes created. So it's not easy. We can do it for both cutting, extruding, whatever you want. The design table is a perfect way to make a bunch of configurations. So now that this is done, we are going to fire up the 3D printer and this is a a ton of printing there's so many hours of printing to fill up these drawers but that's what time lapse is for so let's go
There you go, guys. The containers turned out 10 million times better than I thought they would. They fit in there perfect. All the tolerances are nice. I kind of wish the Alex drawers pulled out a little bit farther because I've got, it's hard to reach at the back, but that's okay. I have all those one by ones in there because I do have a ton of fasteners on order right now. Unfortunately, they didn't get in for the video, but all those are going to be filled up with some hardware for some future product. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about design tables. And if you want any of those STLs for your own 3D printing and your own Alex cabinets, they're all in the description below. So go check that out. I will see you guys in the next project.